JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week January the 17th until January the 21st. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, following the US CPIs last week, we get more inflation numbers for December this week, with the most important ones perhaps being those from the UK and Canada. We also have a Bank of Japan monetary policy decision tomorrow during the Asian morning. We don't expect any fireworks, while from Australia we get the employment report for December. Those are the important events, but let's take things from the beginning. Today we already got China's GDP for the fourth quarter as well as the nation's uh, fixed asset investment, industrial production and retail, and retail sales for December. The GDP accelerated by more than anticipated with industrial production and fixed asset, and fixed asset investment also beating um, their own forecasts. Only retail sales missed the estimates, slowing by more than expected. In our view, this suggests that the world's uh, second largest economy was not affected that much by the crisis in the property sector, the energy shock during the, during the quarter, and the recent uh, strict uh, COVID-related lockdowns across the country. Now, combined with the People's Bank of China's unexpected decision to cut the borrowing costs of its uh, medium-term loans for the first time since April 2020, this may allow some participants to start uh, the week uh, by adding to their uh, risk exposures. Now, there are no major indicators or releases on, uh, no other indicators or releases uh, on today's calendar. But we do have some important economic events scheduled for the rest of uh, the week, as well as uh, several earnings. Uh, earnings releases. We will examine the, micro the macroeconomic events in detail as every week, but it is also worth mentioning some of the big firms that report earnings. Among commercial banks, we have uh, Goldman Sachs on Tuesday, followed by Morgan Stanley and Bank of, and Bank of America on Wednesday. Big non-financial firms include uh, Procter & Gamble on Wednesday and Netflix on Thursday, the first of the closely watched FANG group. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asian session, we have a central bank uh, deciding on monetary policy, and this is the Bank of Japan. Inflation has jumped uh, out of uh, the negative territory during the last months of 2021 and accelerated notably in November, but in contrast with other major economies, it remains below uh, the bank's objective of 2%. Therefore, in our view, this bank has still a long way to go before uh, before they start uh, considering uh, raising interest rates. That said, despite uh, refraining from taking any policy action, due to some improvement in Japan's economic data, officials may decide to sound a bit more optimistic and perhaps upgrade uh, their economic forecasts. As for the yen, barring any major surprises, we don't expect it to react much on the decision. We believe that it will stay mainly driven by developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. Now, later in the day, during the European morning, we have the UK employment report for November. During the early European morning, uh, we get the UK employment report. The unemployment rate is expected to have held steady at 4.2%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added 128,000 jobs in the three months to November, compared to 149,000 in the three months to October. As for wages, both the including and excluding bonuses rates are forecast to have declined. 
Now, although this could suggest that uh, inflation may start easing in the months to come, we don't expect this data set to alter expectations around the Bank of England's policy plans. After all, uh, the rest of the numbers besides wages are expected to be decent. And what's more, we get more recent data concerning the month of December on Wednesday and uh, Friday. Now from Germany, we get uh, we will get back on the Bank of England expectations when we describe the data we get on Wednesday, uh, which are the more important ones, the, the, UK, the UK CPIs. Now, we stay on Tuesday and we say that from Germany, we get the, ZD, the ZDW survey for, uh, for January. The, with the current conditions index expected to have ticked down to minus 7.5 from minus 7.4, However, uh, the economic sentiment one is anticipated to have increased to 32.7 from 26.8. This means that analysts see improvement uh, in uh, this improvement for Eurozone's uh, growth engine in the next uh, six months and thus the Euro may receive a small boost at the time of the release. However, we don't expect a, hu a huge reaction and the reason is that uh, such numbers are unlikely to prompt participants to massively add to bets over a rate hike by the ECB this year. Remember that last week, ECB chief economist Philip Lane said that they do not see Eurozone inflation above 2% in the medium term, despite rising to 5% in December, which means that they are, stick, they are sticking to their view of no hikes uh, here. Now on Wednesday, during the early European day, we have the UK CPIs for December. Uh, the headline rate is um, is forecast to have ticked up to 5.2% from 5.1%, while the core one is expected to have held steady at uh, 4%. Now, according to the um, UK overnight index swaps forward yield curve, market participants are nearly certain that the Bank of England will uh, hit the hike button again at uh, its uh, upcoming gathering. Remember, we had a uh, uh, 15 basis points hike at the previous meeting and now uh, the bank is expected to deliver another one uh, quarter point, uh, tw uh, 25 percent and uh, 25 basis points, excuse me, hike uh, at the upcoming gathering um, scheduled later this month. So elevated inflation is likely to add more credence to that view uh, of a rate hike uh, at the upcoming gathering and perhaps allow some more GBP uh, buying. We've seen the pound uh, being strong recently on expectations of a rate hike by the Bank of England and uh, accelerating inflation could help that trend uh, extend. Now we get more CPI data during the day. From Germany we get the final prints for December which are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, while later in the day we have Canada's uh, rates for the same month. Both the headline and core rates are forecast to have held steady at 4.7 and 3.6% year over year, well above the upper end of the Bank of Canada's target range of 1-3%. to Now at its latest meeting, the Bank of Canada kept interest rates untouched at 0.25%. And in the statement accompanying the decision, the decision, the language was more cautious than previously, with officials expressing concerns over the economic impact of the Omicron uh, coronavirus uh, variant. That said, the Omicron strain proved to be milder than initially estimated. And with the economy improving notably, traders currently, as, uh, traders currently assign a strong chance for a rate increase uh, by the Bank of Canada this month. So, elevated inflation is likely to keep that probability high and perhaps support the already strong uh, loony. So, summarizing here, on Wednesday we have CPIs from the UK and Canada uh, and uh, with, uh, with expectations around the uh, Bank of England and Bank of Canada hike uh, at their uh, next meetings, it will be interesting to see uh, how they could uh, affect uh, those expectations. And if indeed the, the inflation in both uh, countries stays elevated, those expectations will strengthen and both the, the pound and the loony could, uh, could continue their uh, latest uptrends. Now, in, 
in, in order to see the pound or the loony uh, correcting uh, decently lower, uh, massively lower, let's say, we need to see uh, one of those uh, data sets disappointing, uh, notably. Now on Thursday, during the Asian trading, Australia's employment report for December is due to be released. The unemployment rate is expected to have ticked down to 4.5% from 4.6%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added much less uh, jobs than it did in November. Specifically, it is expected to have added 30,000 jobs after adding 366.1 thousand in November. Now, according to the ASX 30-day interbank uh, cash rate uh, futures uh, yield curve, market participants are fully pricing in a rate hike by the RBA to be delivered in April, while they see the official cash rate exceeding 1% by the end of the year. Uh, however, at its December gathering, the RBA reiterated the view that they are unlikely to touch the hike button in 2022, hinting that this could happen, could start happening in 2023. Thus, with market participants being overly optimistic, there is ample room for disappointment. Therefore, weaker than expected numbers have the potential to result in a decent slide in the Aussie. So be careful with regards to the Aussie here, a disappointment could uh, bring it under strong selling interest. Now from the Eurozone, we get the final CPIs uh, for December, which are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, as well as the minutes from the latest ECB gathering. Now at that meeting, the ECB announced that it will end, uh, it will end the pandemic emergency purchase program in March. However, they decided to extend their investment horizon of the program and also to compensate uh, by doubling the monthly pace of the asset purchase program for the second quarter. In our view, this revealed willingness to stay accommodative for a while longer, and we expect the minutes to confirm just that. That said, we don't expect a major uh, tumble by the euro. After all, ECB President Christine Lagarde said several times that they are unlikely to hit uh, the hike button this year, with Philip Lane hinting that uh, the hin hinting uh, the same the same view uh, last week by saying that they don't see inflation above two uh, percent in the medium term. Thus, although inflation accelerated to 5% in December, we believe that if the minutes confirm the view of no hikes this year, it will not come as a surprise. Now, finally, on Friday, a Asia time, we have Japan's national CPIs for December. No forecast is available for the headline rate, while the core one is anticipated to have ticked up to 0.6% year over year from 0.5%. Later in the day, we get retail sales data from the UK and Canada. In the UK, the numbers are for the month of December. The forecast points to declines, but conditional upon inflation accelerating further on Wednesday, we don't believe that these numbers will force participants to remove their bets over a rate hike by the Bank of England at, at its upcoming gathering. The Canadian data are for November. The headline rate is forecast to have declined, but the core one to have held steady again. We don't believe that these numbers could prove game changes for the Bank of Canada. After all, they are for November. And up until then, we will already have the CPIs for December in uh, hand. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope uh, I hope you have a great uh, you have a great week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around uh, nine o'clock a.m. GMT, when I describe the events of the day in more detail and uh, um, the market moving events of the preceding day, and I also present a view on that. So goodbye. Have a nice day and a greater uh, week. JFT, just fair and direct.